guys, Brian with Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana. And I have a special, special guest. Sometimes we talk about cards on a budget. Sometimes we talk about two and three figure cards. Today we're talking about four, five, and six figure cards with my really good Louisiana collector friend, Mr. Steve Davis, also known as Monk's Cards. Uh, Steve, welcome to the show. It's first time coming on the channel. Sort of the first time coming on the channel. You hovered over my shoulder when I opened a box of wax that you donated to the show for me to yeah. open. Do you remember that? That's what I do. Yeah. Well, first of all, I appreciate you having me on, man. Uh, it's exciting uh, to be here. The uh, but yeah, I do. I, I came to your office. I said, look, man, I want to be the guy behind the curtain, man. You just you be you be you. Open up the cards. Hopefully, we hit something really awesome. Uh, and I kind of hovered over your shoulder and watched you do work your magic. So actually, actually, if you remember. We sold uh, it hit. Marivish, the Pew Marivish hit. School, numbered out of like 10 or 25 or something like that. Uh, yeah, it wasn't bad. A gold Maravich. And we found a buyer who watched the stupid video. They, the buyer watched the video. He's like, hey, if that Maravich for sale, I'll take it. And I'll put you all in touch and you got a deal done. So that was good. You were cool. some of your don't, don't leave out the part that you've gotten so big time on me that the buyer wanted you to sign. <laughs> Do you remember right. that? He wanted That's to right. take right. the future. Right. I, I, I pray to cool. God he was joking, Steve. I hope he was joking. I don't think I think he was pumped up. I'll be honest with you. I think he he watches the show and likes the content and was like, <laughs> Yeah, hey, well, I'm not this one. I'm not autographing anything for anybody. Those those days are over. Those days are <laughs> over. Uh I love that you're pretending to be the world's biggest Pelicans fan with a hat, a shirt. You got a Pelicans like thong on. I don't know what's happening. Well, I, but I, in, in all fairness to myself, I'm doing this with you, and then I'm literally jumping in a, a car with a bunch of other people and going to the game tonight. So, oh, good, okay. You know, it's early; they play at six thirty. So we got to bug out of here and out of Baton Rouge. We're going to bug out of here about four. So what I didn't yeah. want to do was be done with you and then have to rustle. Everybody's meeting at my house, so that's that's. Look, I look. I've got the bobblehead set back here, man. The same one you have, you know. <laughs> got it right here, off screen to my right. I love it, man. I love it. Y'all gonna have fun tonight. I'm going Sunday uh, to the Blazers game. Oh, so. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going Sunday. Um, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be really fun. It's actually cool. So I, I've got a suite for this one, and uh, I don't know you got a suite for everyone, but I got a suite for this one, and I'm bringing uh, a bunch of my clients from my real estate world that I you know awesome. how I feed my kids. But I'm also I've got some guys flying in uh, that are huge Damian Lillard collectors that I've learned that I've gotten to know through Instagram group chat, and so they're flying in, Steve. From one of them is I think flying in from the Netherlands. And so a bunch of guys, I swear to God, they're flying in. And I was like, y'all come in, y'all enjoy New Orleans, have fun. I think he actually flies in Thursday night, one of them. Uh, but I think it's going to be like four or five of us in there. And uh, it's going to be fun, man. I can't wait to see Dame Lillard play in person. I've never seen him play in person. And you know I collect him and just Absolutely. picked up a big card of his. That's exciting. Um, yeah. So Monk's Cards, let's just get it right here. Monk's your nickname or monkey. So your Monk's Cards on Instagram. I'm going to pull up screen share so people can see. Of course, you got the Will Epic Signatures autograph as your avatar there. You got to love that. Um, that's it. Monks cards. Monks with an S. Cards with a Z. The nerdy dorky way. Uh, uh, 881 followers. We're, we're sending you to the moon. This, this video. If you guys haven't followed Steve on Instagram, he's terrible at posting. And let me show you why. He's posted, what is that? 2, 5, 8, 11, 14. Unacceptable. You got too many badass cards. We're going to talk about... Some of those cards in particular today, you got to get better. You you need to hire an assistant to just do your Instagram and handle your social media. I do. I talk to my. I have actually at my company. I have my, uh, my a girl Brooke who does all of our social media stuff, and I actually talked to her a little bit about maybe doing it. I'd pay her on the oh side, but I, I don't know. But the, pro the problem is, is that you know she doesn't understand that world, and you know she's gonna be like, oh man, what, you know what is this? How much does this cost? I'm like, oh, man, I'm embarrassed to even say. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I do need to up my game on the posting. But I've been grinding hard, man, trying to get this set complete. So that's what's been killing me. And here's the deal: when you say the set, uh, I know what you're talking about. But we're going to explain to these people uh, what that set is. We're here to talk about your um, epic, uh, almost mythical, uh, the speed that you've displayed in putting this set together. Steve is Usain Bolt like. Um, I thought I moved through it quick. Um, uh, just to kind of recapitulate exactly how we got to this point. So uh, if you watch my channel, you know, I tried to put together, uh, I put together the 86 Fleer PSA 10, which I thought was the best set in the world. And then for whatever reason, I chose to chase the 1997 Metal Universe Precious Metal Gems Red set. Those are cards are serial number to 90. 
10 of them are green. So really there's only, I'm sorry, there's serial number to 100. 10 of them are green. So really there's only 90 reds. Um, you know, and I had those pulled up. Here's what a couple of them look like on uh, Steve's Instagram page. There's the Nash and the Malone. Um, these cards grade miserably poorly. I got Steve, I think to, um, I want to say a little over 90 unique, maybe. I was a little over 90. There's 123 yeah. in the set, as you of all people know. Um, and I got to, I got to 90. And then I got approached by, we're not going to use his, his name. He's a mutual friend of ours now. And he's, uh, we've helped him. He's helped us, uh, you know, and then I bowed out of the game. And uh, I sold uh, 89, uh, I think is how many I sold. We're going to call him West Coast Whale because that's what I've called him yeah. uh, in an episode. Cool. Cool. We're also going to talk about Midwest Whale. And we're not going to use our other uh, mutual PMG Red uh, set collector. We're not going to use his real name either. So we'll say West Coast Whale and Midwest Whale. West Coast Whale bought 89 from me uh, and paid me a pretty good margin, knowingly, willingly, and voluntarily. And he crushed through the set. He finished his set when, Steve? Maybe uh, two weeks ago, I, I gave him the last card. You gave him a card that he needed, which was truly ironic and uh, extremely generous of you and uh, altruistic of you. So he completed his set two weeks ago. And tell everybody how close you are right now. Just spoiler alert, we'll start at the finish line and work backwards. You yeah. are how many away? I mean, you know, depending on some decisions I make here in the next next couple of days about the, about the, the biggest card in the deal, uh, about four cards, about four cards away. Yeah. I think you're three or four cards away. And I just emailed your list to me. I'm pulling the list up. Some people have different opinions on whether this is a good or a uh, bad idea to share. And we've, I've talked about it on my channel. It's good because I've got a big mouth and there's a lot of people that watch a show and a couple thousand people are going to watch this and maybe they'll reach out to you and say, I have this. I made a post for you the other day on Instagram and yeah. uh, bang, bang, two people reached out and got you two right. of the very few cards that you needed that were left over. But here's Steve's list. Uh, Steve needs the Penny Hardaway, but he, I think he's in negotiations for that one. I am. Um, and then he's picked up, and this is going to be a talking point, uh, very recently because this list was not very old. You just <laughs> got this done. Yeah. Jordan is in the works with some yep. contingencies. Right. Rice, Kendall Gill, Antonio Davis, Dumars Dampier, uh, and Marcus Camby. And right. so some of you guys are looking at the screen. You may not be familiar with this 1997 red set, but – uh, there's no such thing as a three-figure PMG red, right? So yeah, that's true. Uh, maybe you could find a raw one in the three figures, but primarily those days are over. Uh, they existed when I started set collecting uh, the, the 97 set, but those days are over. So Steve needs the Penny, the Kobe, which I just happen to have. Uh, the problem with that is that I paid way too much for it, and Steve's not going to overpay what I paid, which was an overpayment. Bo Outlaw and John Stark. So that's it. Those three possibly, uh, maybe Penny Hardaway, but it sounds like you might be able to work something out with that. So Steve's there. He's 120 or 119 out of 123, somewhere around there. It's absolutely astonishing and eye-popping. Do you remember when we did our deal? This is how our deal started. Steve, I'm going to share numbers. We've talked about yeah, this. Yeah, okay. I'm that, yeah. So I'm transparent. We've talked about this before on this channel. If I make money, I tell you. If I lose money, which I did last night when I sold all my LeBron chromes, I haven't even talked to you about that, Steve. I got, <laughs> as expected, I got destroyed, you know. Uh, so, but anyway, it was time to cash out and reinvest. You know the drill. But uh, Steve and I, uh, first, I warned Steve. Steve followed me on my little collecting path on this 97 PMG red set. He was next to me, and he was kind of my sounding board when I sold my 89 cards to West Coast Whale and gave up on it to push more into Jordan. And then one day you were in my office and I don't know what inspired you. And you said, hey, I might buy the rest of the PMGs you have and start collecting the set. Yeah. What? You had a bunch of duplicates, I think. Uh, some duplicates. It was duplicates. Yeah. yeah. I didn't sell them to West Coast Whale because he already had them and or they were duplicates. That's right. And you said those words to me. Tell me why and what happened. And, and, and yeah. you can take it from there. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, I, I think it, I, I, I was looking. I was interested in the um, at the time, you and I had talked and you had sold your. Uh, your PSA 10 86 Fleer set. And one of the things that that I was like, man, I, I was thinking about going down that rabbit hole. And you kind of talked me off that ledge because of the fact that trying to get the Kareem sticker would just be a nightmare because there's only, nightmare. you know, I forget the, the pot, but it's very low. 14. Um, well, 15 now. Yeah. Yeah. 15 of those. Uh, and, and a couple people have multiple copies of it, right? I mean, one guy we know, I think, has three or four copies. 
West well, Coast whale. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so, uh, so I actually talked to him a little bit about it, and it didn't sound like he was real, you know, uh, happy about trying to release one for any reason whatsoever. Right. So, uh, man, so man, that was kind of disheartening. Um, and then you showed me these cards. I was like, man, these these are these are unique, right? I mean, you got sports cards, and you got stuff all over the place that's just, uh, you know, cool, unique stuff. But these were really, really unique in the fact that number one, they're they're super rare. Uh, a lot of them are really, really hard to find. Number two, you're not going to go out there and get a PSA 10 set. It just doesn't exist. It's never going to happen. Um, and number three, the demand on them seemed to me to be really shooting up. You know, watching the chat the, the chat about them, uh, looking at the article they had in, uh, I think it's the PSA magazine. I think they did a big spread uh, yeah. about the, the, the red PMG Reds. And uh, they were getting a whole lot of traction. And um, I said, you know what? This would be a set that's that's – attainable that i can get the whole thing and the interesting part about it was brown was that the, like the kareem's obviously look the jordan is 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 the big card in in the in the 86 clear set right but that's, that's an easily attainable, it's an easily attainable card in the 86 clear and it, and it's also an easily attainable card in the pmg red there really wasn't a card other than you know a couple of the small ones people wouldn't believe mitch rich yeah. might be one of them that are really hard to find and i said you know what this will be a little bit of a challenge and when i know when i get to the end of it the, the whale card that I need, unlike the Kareem, I could go get it, right? It's just it's just a check. Yeah. You know? As opposed to getting to the end in the, in the 86 Fleer and really, how long am I going to have to wait to, to yeah. be able to find an, a PSA 10 Kareem sticker? So, uh, and, and the fact that it was an easy jump start with you, you know, obviously we've been friends for a long time. You know, yeah. I, mean, I've been, I'm, I met Brian through his dad. I mean, Brian's dad was my banker coming up in yeah. business. Uh, it was very helpful to me in my career. And so, uh, and that's how I met Brian and, you know, we were friends. You made it easy for me to do the deal. Um, you know, we worked out some terms on it, just a few yeah. other things. And so I said, man, you know what, this will be fun. Well, little did I know that uh, at the time and remember this, I wasn't even on Instagram. You were not on Instagram. And I said, you're not going to make it. You're not going to do this yeah. unless you get on Instagram. And I was like, maybe yeah. this is a sign that you need to start taking this collecting seriously and get on social media. I remember I told you that I was like, I, I, you know, I was at whatever, I guess I picked up 89 plus 29 plus three. So whatever that is, you know, 119, 100, I had 122 PMGs total, right? I still have three and I sold you 29. I think I sold 89. It might've been 90 or something like that to West Coast Whale. But I probably picked up 90% of those on Instagram and word of mouth, uh, right. just through mutual collector friends. I have, like I said, I got a big mouth. And I got big ears. And so when people mentioned PMGs, I heard it. And when I talked about it, people heard me and I uh, spread the word just like you did a great job of. I told you, I said, for you to get this done, you need to meet Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C, Mr. D, Mr. E. And I put you in touch with those guys. And I said, look, this is my friend. I vouch for him with my wallet. Talk to him the same way you guys talk to me. Trust him the same way you trusted me implicitly. Uh, you know, if anything goes haywire, I've got I've got it covered financially. It's I know he's coming through, and um, and those guys did. You know, those those guys were like conduits and put you in touch with me. And I tried to keep doing it with you. I mean, I was kind of out of it, but I, I I've done my best. I'm trying to do my best to help you finish the thing. I'd love to be the the way that you get the last card uh, from your <laughs> list that you can share. That'd be awesome. That would that would be cool. And I, and I would I would love it'd be ironic and cool. And I hope you are able to find it for me. Yeah, amazing. there's that list. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people have to understand too, uh, uh, Brian. Is that like you know d doing a set like this? Um, you know, somebody would embark on that journey. For me, it was a lot easier because of our relationship, right? And because of your involvement in you know in in collecting cards and 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 you know just you're just in the game, right? And you've been doing yeah. it for a long time, even before it became wildly popular again during COVID. I mean, you've been doing this your whole life. So for me to get in, set up an Instagram account, your introductions um, and your vouches for me right out of the gate got me in the door with people who more likely than not, I mean, just the average guy who doesn't have an intro and a solid, solid vouch, um, it's hard to get in the door with those guys. They're not going to want to yeah. do deals with you. And to your point, you introduced me to all those people. Obviously, I'm, I've done deals with all of them. And my big thing is that I'm an unknown, right? You, you guys have been, you guys and all the guys that you've introduced me to have been in the game for a long, long time. I was in it small when I was younger, got out of it. And like a lot of people got back in uh, during COVID and, um, and took it to the next level from, from what I used to do. But having those vouchers, the big thing for me was I didn't want to let you down. You know what I mean? They, they would say, yeah. look, yeah, we would negotiate a price. And my big thing was I would agree to it and I would pay, I mean, within 10 minutes, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I didn't want them 
having any sort of angst or fear about dealing with me as a new guy. And once you do that with a few people, they're like, okay, you know, this guy handles his business. Brian's right. He is legit. And, uh, and so that, that played a big part of it. Obviously, you know, your introductions, your help was a huge catalyst, but I, I would uh, implore any investor, collector, whatever you are uh, in, in this game, you know, look, pay quick, man, pay quick. If you're dealing with big time people who everybody knows and they're a known entity, they're known dealers or they're known collectors who do, do the right thing, pay them fast, man, communicate yeah. clearly, get the deal done quick because that's what builds trust. I mean, there's a guy, Before, that you, yeah. Yeah, I, I did, a, Brian, I did a deal with a guy who I did a deal way early in the game. You introduced me to like one of the first cards I bought on Instagram and he ended up having another card that I needed. Uh, two of them actually, the, the lately, the Pippin, um, what are the ones that you bought the Luke Longley and the Pippin, right? I got yeah. those. So that same guy, I said, Hey man, I'm really interested when negotiate and we negotiated price. And I said, what would you do this? And he said, you know what, man, I remember our first deal we did together. It was easy. You did exactly what you said you were going to do. I'll agree to that price, you know? So anyway, I, I, again, it, I think it's about people doing the right thing, especially in this game of dealing with people who you may never shake their hand in your life. Yeah. Tell me this. A couple things come to mind when you start telling your story. First of all, it brings back memories. It, it wasn't that long ago that I gave up. It was right before the national, right? Uh, yeah. When I gave up on this. Um, and I did it to to really hyper focus and narrow the focus of my collecting more into Jordan. Uh, I've done a pretty decent job of that. It's not a perfect science. I do buy Lillard. I do buy Giannis. I do buy some other stuff and I do have some other sets I'm collecting. Um, how many, how many times did you communicate with and or get deals done with people outside of the domestic United States? This was the part that I found fascinating <laughs> is that I had friends in Australia, right. Austria, uh, Germany, the Netherlands, Canada, for sure. Um, I'm trying to remember if I dealt with anybody in South America or Africa. I don't think I did, but damn it, the thing took me all over the world, man. It, and it was it was amazing at, at how different a niche uh, or niche or whatever part of the hobby this was from my traditional uh, collecting. Like the 86 Fleer set, it took me all over the U.S., never took me overseas. This took me everywhere over the world, Steve. No, you're right. You're right. And and whether it was direct or through other people, a lot of these car, a lot of the cards came from Asia. You know what I mean? There's a lot of uh, Asian collectors uh, who who love basketball, NBA basketball, and have for years. So a lot of the cards came from that that neck of the woods. Absolutely. I didn't deal I didn't deal directly with with those people, but I knew that they were coming because of my negotiations. And look, most recently, uh, in fact, the card that uh, I got for West Coast Well, I, I did an eBay deal with a guy in Canada, and he was having trouble getting me the card for shipping. You told me I remember. Had, I remember. Yeah. yeah. So he ended up, he felt so bad. He, he, he sent me on eBay, he sent me his cell phone number and his name's Arno and Arno. And so we started talking, texting and texting and texting. I was in, I was in Vegas on business at the time. So I'm texting him at the bar. Next thing you know, we're talking on the phone. He's like, look, man, my English is a little broken. I'm, I'm French. We started talking. Well, next thing you know, instead of buying that one card, I bought five cards from him. One of which was the one I knew that West Coast Well needed. Yeah. So I got it in. I sent it to, I didn't tell anybody anything. I sent it in to get graded. And I and then I let him know, hey, by the way, this card's and he was just like, holy mackerel, you know. So listen yeah. to this. I was scared of the shipping. So my company, we emailed him a shipping label. OK. And the return address was my office and the address it was going to was my office. How about think about that? Yeah. I emailed it to him. He's two hours from the United States. Yeah. So I said, look, I don't mind paying a little bit of a premium. I sent him the shipping label. He prints it at his house and drives two hours into the, to northern New York goes to the FedEx store there that we agreed on and ships the cards from there. I get them the next day. To not mess with the, the border. To not mess with the, the Canadian. Crap. The Canadian shipping confuses the hell out of me, Steve. I've dealt with a couple of them. And finally, yeah. I was like, I'm not doing it. You know, I'm just going to. Yeah. But that was most it. recently what I did. It was, it was crazy. But, uh, you know, you go through great links. How, uh, this is going to sound like a PWCC hype, but how, how much did having a PWCC vault help in the set collecting? It, for me, it was an invaluable resource to be able to share pictures uh, of cards and duplicates that I needed to trade to get the ones that I didn't have just to keep track of what I had. Um, it, it was much different than having them over here, even in a gun safe, certainly at a bank safe yeah. down the street. I can't get in my car every time I want to go take a picture or I need to check something to see what I have. I use Excel spreadsheets and the PWCC vault. And that was the key to everything for me. I don't know how it was for you, but um, the other thing is talk a little bit about, uh, sending cards directly from PWCC to PSA to get graded and then back directly to PWCC's vault. Did you do that like I did? I did that with about 45 of them. Did you really? Okay, so I, 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 everything that I get that's not graded, I, I get 
typically I try to get to myself directly. If I do send it to PWCC raw, I usually send it back to myself. I have not done that yet, but I will tell you this, a big thing about having the vault was I was able to, like you said, screenshot, send a picture to somebody of a duplicate or what's happened a ton and has helped me a ton has been somebody needs a card and yeah. I have it. Well, when I had 50, 40, 50 cards, I was you so far away. Like I had Marcus Camby. I had Marcus Camby, great, like a PSA five, like in my hand. Well, West Coast Whale needed it and it for his set. And he's like, hey, buddy, you send me the Camby. I'll send you three cards. Yes. So now, now, I'm, yeah. now I'm getting closer. So I did it, you know, and I, I, yeah. I and I just got word this morning that I got a Camby coming. So it's it, like, okay. It's perfect. It came full <laughs> circle, right? It's unbelievable yeah. how karma works. Uh, I did the exact same thing, man. Exact same thing. There were situations where I'd send two and get four back, you know, because they were harder to get. And at that point, I was like, I don't care. All I care about is taking steps forward quantity wise. I'll worry about the Mitch Richmond later. And we keep saying the Mitch Richmond. People may not know. Mitch Richmond is a pain in the ass. Like the Mitch Richmond card is not quite to the level of the Kareem sticker, but the damn card is really hard to find. And it's not cheap either. Uh, because he's a Hall of Famer. And so, um, you know, just to give people an idea of what these damn things sell for, this, these are old numbers. And, and again, it looks like I robbed my good friend Steve here because I made 40 grand off of him. But uh, the thing I want to reiterate was I bought these before a market spike, a lot of them, right? And it was a quick spike, but I was pre-spike. And Steve, I don't want to say your timing was bad but it was uh, peculiar to say the least you jumped in at a time where these things were red hot on fire and uh and so these were the going rates you know and for a bold yeah. deal like this for you to pick up 29 at once some of these are monsters too like you picked up the barkley um I, you know i i gave you the barkley at a pretty good price you know and i might have overpaid a little bit because i was in tilt i was on tilt when i bought that barkley i remember that <laughs> uh but the barkley right there at 34 8 and again some of these prices may have come down a little bit but some of them, some of the comments may have actually gone up, believe it or not. Um, Tracy McGrady was a big one. I had two of those, uh, and I got one of them crazy cheap for here for thirteen three ninety. Uh, the Grant Hill, I still think the Grant Hill is underpriced. I, I know not everybody collects him, but he's another big one in there. Uh, the Arvidas Sabonis. Um, all the Bulls are relevant, Steve, because the PMG Reds are color matches. Right, By nature, right. it's a color match. The Blazers, same thing. Those are natural color matches. And so you've got a lot of collectors out there that uh, that place a premium on those. And then, of course, the KG was 30 right here, just a little bit shy of what the Barkley was. I was collecting the cards, and this is something I want you to, to elaborate on. I was collecting the cards in a PSA or BGS slab, period. Right. I had the intention, once I completed the set, that I was going to convert all the BGS to PSA. Uh, there's a lot that goes into that thought process and decision. Number one, the PSA red label matches the red card. That is big. Uh, PSA is worth more than BGS per se, generally speaking, and more highly sought after. That's big. Uh, just for the people watching, Steve, tell me if I'm wrong, but this is the way it was when I bowed out and transitioned all these 29 cards over to you. Uh, a BGS is minus two equals what it would get at PSA, generally, give or take a half grade. BGS it, eight, PSA six. BGS it, seven and a half, much. PSA four or five. Yeah. Uh, BGS nine, uh, PSA maybe seven or six, right? Is that kind of the experience you had? Well, it, it is. And I think the other thing you got to keep in mind is too is, is, is the scary part about that is, is it's become evident that BGS wasn't near – uh, as particular when it came yep. to the miscuts for the size of the card, right? Yes. So the yes. card has got to be a certain size. Well, what people have found out is in these BGS holders, you would send them to PSA and put a minimum grade of PSA 1, let's say. Let's say I'm sending a BGS 8. My minimum grade is PSA 1 because I just want a number grade with PSA. Yeah. Well, you send it over and they send it back and they say, no, it's going to be at PSA authentic because they measure yep. it in the case and they're like, it's short. It's miscut, whatever, right? And so that really is the biggest uh, – I agree with you on the grades. You're going to get two to three lower PSA. Or, or, or you're going to get an authentic. Or you're going to get a PSA. A. That's the caveat. And that's the scary part, right, is that you got this card that's a BGS 8, right? I mean, just look at, uh, at one of the ones on the sheet. You got a BGS 8 KG, right? $30,000 I paid for that card. Okay. So so I take that card. I send it to PSA, and it gets a, a PSA 6. I'm fine with that. I still got – I feel like I still got a $30,000 card, maybe a little more value. But if it's a PSAA, now what do I have? That, that's the big question. Yeah. And that's the big fear. Um, and so my plan is to go all PSA, but I am very afraid of 
you know, of what kind of feedback I'm going to get. Cause I'm not going to crack them and send them. I'm going to send them for a crossover with a minimum PSA one. Definitely and, do not crack these cards. No. <laughs> I can't tell you enough. I did. I, I actually, I trusted my good friends at PWCC to crack uh, four of them. Uh, out of SGC, I had four SGCs, and okay. you know I was just collecting PSA or BGS. So every raw I had that I picked up, and again, beggars can't be choosers. If you are trying to collect this thing in PSA and you see a card you need and it's raw, you're buying the card. Period. Like you're buying the card. You're not going to let it go and say I'll wait for the PSA because you may never see one for five years, right? So you're buying anything and everything. And uh, we're going to get to the anxiety part in just a second because that's a big factor in collecting a set like this, a, a monster set like this. Uh, there's a lot of anxiety to it. And you and I talked about that at the outset before we did this deal and we did that transition. But, like, uh, you never sent a card to BGS to get graded, did you? Because you're trying to nope. ultimately – so all your raw went to PSA. Every, and, every single um, one. Yep, every you, single one. You still have some BGS sitting in your vault? I do. Are yep. you worried? I, 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 haven't, I, I, I haven't crossed over – any BGS yet because the reason I know what I know is obviously dealing with so many people who are, I say so many, you know, there's not that many people who are chasing this set nor that have access to this many cards, but the ones that I do deal with, I've learned a lot from, from the BGS. Yeah. And, and also I did buy one card. I bought a very expensive card from, from another collector and he was very candid. He said, look, man, I sent it to PSA. They told me it's not going to cross over. So he gave me a, you know, a, a relatively good price on the card because he had already sent it in and they told him, no, it's, we're not going to give you a, a number grade. So, and then that goes back to having, you know, the people you trust that you deal with. Um, yeah. and, but I haven't crossed any over yet, Brian, because I want to get the whole set complete and then I want to make a decision. Okay. Am I going to go to, yeah. let's just say by some, by, by, let's just say by some chance I have, I have the whole set before a national. Do I want to take them all with me, you know, or ship on site. Them and, and just go on site and say, look, I need to do this. I need to, I want to swap them all over because if somebody, if I have a Jordan, it's a BGS eight and a half and they're like, it's going to be a PSAA. I just can't, I can't swallow that. Yeah. You know? Would you rather, I guess the question that, that might, that I might have is, and, you, and this is just a personal decision. Uh, I was collecting the whole thing in BGS and PSA. Um, I guess the question is, would you rather have all numerical BGS and PSA, or would you rather have all PSA with some of them being PSA authentic? including possibly authentic altered. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I, 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 I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I'd probably rather have them all PSA. I would too. I, I would. You know what? It, I'm OCD. I, I need my shit to look alike. <laughs> so yes, I'm going to tell you, yes, you I don't care what it does, the value, uh, you know, in the long run, I think the right. set's going to be an absolute gold mine. That's just me from an investor perspective. I told you that. Uh, I knew what I was selling. I knew it was special. Uh, and I knew I probably could have gotten to the finish line. Probably not as quick as you, but I had the big ones checked off. I had the Jordan. I had the Kobe. I had the Duncan. I had the Barkley. I had the Garnett. I had the Rob. I had all those cards. So I was just, it was just a matter of digging the little ones out of the weeds, which you've had, got, had great success in doing. Uh, so I knew I was going to get to the finish line. Um, but I wanted them all in those red PSA slabs. I wanted to say I have the yeah. whole set, all PSA slab, 123 slash 123, put it to bed, share it, look at it. Um, you know, the color match nature of it just matters so much to me. And again, I don't think there's anything wrong with BGS slabs. Um, but the one thing we did figure out, uh, Steve, is that if you put the notation on your PSA submission, you will get the card back in a slab. If it's, as long as it's authentic. That's if right. it's fake, you won't. That's right. I haven't had any issues with fakes. But Maybe. if it's been trimmed or recolored, it'll be slab authentic altered. Right. If it's uh they can't say it was trimmed, but they think it's like men's size or something like short. that. Yeah, yeah. Short, they'll yeah. just slab it authentic. And then obviously right. if they can give it a grade, they give it a grade. But either way, if you send a raw card to them, it is coming back in a PSA slab one way or another with some type of designation which is good yeah so you got and you got to be very specific in the comments when you send it in you got to be right? very specific right like make sure no matter what this card is not send this back in a card is, favor. unless it's yeah. fake right and right. so uh, i actually had to send one back to psa brian because the uh because i put those notes in there and they sent it back and you know one of the i remember things you remember that and yeah, uh, they, they, they handled their business and they did it the right way but um honestly man like i, I think about it um collecting it and if i have a, some psaas in there I mean, is that ideal? No, but my Mitch Richmond is a PSAA. And I'll be honest with you, I, I can't tell you this off the cuff, but I don't think there's but between four and six Mitch Richmonds graded, like in the PSA yeah. five court. I could be wrong about that. But I mean, 
what am I going to, well, I don't have any choice. I'm not going to find yeah. one. It's, it's a Sasquatch. You know what Let's I mean? I've got a year to find one. Um, we can look this up. That's yeah. the beauty of uh, screen share and having all the time in the world. I'm going to sh- screen share and we're going to look it up together. And we're going to find out exactly. Anything. Yeah, we're going to find out how many PSA Mitch Richmonds there are. Watch this. 1997 Metal Universe Precious. Let's see what happens. Going to pull up football. Let's go basketball. Do you know what number Mitch Richmond is? No matter. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to type it in. On the top of my head. There's four, Steve. A five, a four, a three, and an authentic. And that that should let you guys know how crazy that is. I mean, I mean yeah. look, look at that, B. I mean, like, how can I sit here and say, oh, man, I, I have to have all number grades. I mean, there's four cards. The whoever has the five is not getting rid of it. Four, not getting rid of it. Three, not well, getting rid of it. Because we well, probably know those three people. I was just about to say, we know <laughs> Nat has one of those and probably the highest. Yeah. We know West Coast Whale has one of those. Yep. We know uh, Midwest Whale has yep. one of those, and that leaves one for uh, the rest of the South, world, including South you. Coast Minnow. That's me. South Coast Minnow has one. That's South Coast <laughs> Minnow. South Coast Crawfish. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, South Coast Crawfish. You change your uh, IG tag. Did you? So is yours the authentic? Is yours the yeah. Mitch Richmond authentic? Yeah. Okay. I, here's, dude, look, this is just me. If I was doing it and this was my ultimate plan, get them all in PSA slabs, be damned about the numbers, don't worry about it. Put them all in PSA slides, man. Yeah. Um, I just think it would be, look so clean. Like I would love to do a video and take that picture. I mean, it's and, and again, not from a, a, a hubris standpoint or from a you know, and to be ostentatious or showy or beat my chest, but just from a like a complete like like to com- complete something so epic. Like that, th- this would have been my biggest claim to fame in the hobby if I'd have finished this set. Right now, it's the '86 Fleer. Been there, done that, and that was my. That's kind of like my hobby story. Uh, this would have been my much better hobby story. And you're there, man. You're right on the doorstep. I'm super excited about it. Let's talk about your mental health and well-being and what I warned you about, Steve. What did I tell you when you first asked me about these 29 cards that I got on this screen right here? I said, Steve, it's a blessing and a curse. You are going to love it because you and I are a lot alike. And that's why we get along. And that's why we're friends, you know, in and out of the hobby and, and whatnot. And, and we do some business transactions together as well. But uh, you and I are a lot alike. I, I think you're kind of like me on cocaine and steroids. That's basically what well, you are. Use is probably psycho. I think that's what most people would use. Yeah. You're, you're like 1.2 me. I'm crazy. I go with, I sprint through a set. You were, did it at a whole nother level, a whole nother speed. It was damn impressive, dude. You went from 29 to 120. Like, how long, Steve? Not a I year? Mean, I mean, I bought it from you. When, when was the National last year? You bought it before or after the National? I don't remember. It was. It, I don't it, either, but it was – I sold to West Coast Whale two months before National because he was paying me in cash at the National – so you must have been – I think you were right in between. I think you bought it maybe three weeks after I sold to him. So yeah. I think – I'm going to say at the, at, the, at, the late, at the earliest, early June. Right. We're not to June. Yeah, I'm, lo- I'm, yeah, I'm look. I, ha- I have a separate folder just for you uh, in my – it says Brian Dennison. I keep that on my uh, – keep that on my deal. Steve, uh, you're, you're, you almost put the PMG Reds together in nine months, dude. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a little scary. Uh, what we did there. I have, I actually have a, um, I'll be able to look that up real quick here and see PSA red set, Brian Dennison. There you are. Um, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I'm about to look at this, but this is it. Uh, so it looks like we, I, I decided to deal with you in August of last year. Are you serious? It was after the national, you know what I've got. Oh, I didn't have the dates of these installments. I'll let you pay me in three installments. You're, yeah, right. you're, the, you're the exception, so I'll let you pay yeah. in installments. Um, yeah, we didn't have dates on it, but I have on here. Steve, no. you got to be kidding me. August, September, October, November, December, January, February. Dude, you're not even eight months yet. Yeah, uh, that's the, 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 the earliest date on my red PMG spreadsheet is 8-15-2022. So that's... Uh, I knew I knew it wasn't during the summer because because um, we both had I was, I was traveling a lot. There's no way it is. I, I, in fact, I would not have enjoyed my summer if we had done this during the summer because I would have been on my computer and Instagram. I didn't again. I didn't have Instagram until until we started this this process. And so I feel like I've been your therapist slash sounding board slash you know sidekick slash broker. I, I feel like I've been every I've I've taken a lot of different capacities to try to help you get this done. 
You've and earned, your, you've earned your margin. You've earned your margin. I'll say. Yeah, so. I've earned my margin. That's right. But I gladly, dude, I'll do anything I can, you know, to try to get you these last three cards. Um, explain the anxiety of 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 being fifteen away and seeing a card pop up or he, seeing a card on Instagram or eBay and it's at one and a half times what it's worth. Explain That's, that anxiety. I like because a lot of people don't understand. Most people in this hobby, Steve. 99.9% of the people they're buying, you know, they're buying certain cards. There are no, you know, once in a lifetime, once in a generation, once in a five year type cards in most people's radar or on their scope. But for this set, for these types of cards, if a card pops up and it's double what it's worth and you see it, you got to pursue it. You have to pursue it. You, you do. And it's, and it's, it's look, it's, it's, it's mentally draining. So what I've basically done, Brian is, is I stopped, collecting anything else you know once i started That's what i did i stopped and so this is all i do like pe people uh you know i have three other sets i think that i've completed before this one that i wanted to Not, nothing of, of any sort we're going to talk about them because they're also badass they're they awesome are, they are cool but 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 once i started doing it you know it took to fill my to fill my time i would uh i would rip some you know i'd rip some wax and you know just just do some other things as opposed to trying to go buy more cards uh that were slab that i wanted so mentally, what this thing has done, man, is it's it's caused me to really um, stay focused on this specific set. Number one, number two, manage my my financial my card financials. I like to call it right. So I've sold a few cards that I never thought I would sell. You know, you yeah. talk about that. Uh, I've sold some cards. Talk about some of the cards you sold. You yeah, did you sell your scoring kings PSA ten, Jordan? I sold some scoring kings. My P, I was trying to get that PSA ten set. Yeah, um, which is very. Do you know anybody who has the whole PSA ten scoring king set? Uh, some guy they call Cajun something <laughs> cardboard. I don't know. Anyway. Did you sell the Jordan? Or did you keep it? No, nah, I still have it. Um, okay, good, 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 good. You sold the rest. You sold all the others. I sold, I sold most of the others. Yeah, and so, um, but I, but but you know, going through that, I decided I needed to sell some stuff. Number one, but number two. Um, you and I are similar personalities. There are other people I talk to who are trying to build this set and they, they have the ability to manage their emotions. They're, they're slower about the process and they, and they have already accepted the fact that it's going to take them a few years to finish. Um, I, I'm not that guy, right? I'm just, I'm psyched. I'm not either. I yeah. can't do it. And so I'm, if I'm going to do something. I'm going to go in 199%. Like I'm just going all in. And so when I started this process, I established relationships that you were, you know, so so kindly introduced me to a lot of those people, built those relationships on my own, you know what I mean, to, to, to yeah. create those so, so, so I could rely on those in the future. And look, when opportunities came, um, I jumped on them, even though some, I paid a premium for a lot of these cards. And I'll be honest with you, some of these cards I paid a premium for, we might not see again for two years, you know, yeah. and I just yeah. can't wait that long. But then also I was, and I don't want to use the word generous because that, that sounds uh, you know, like I'm, I'm trying to say something great about myself, but I was uh, smart and prudent with the people who I knew could help me the most. Cause there are some yep. massive collectors that I deal with on Instagram and now have their cell phones, you know, like we talk outside of, I've actually, All the time. Yeah. One, one of them um, has helped me with business where he lives. Like I've had to send some crews up there and he's helped me with attorneys and CPAs, introduced me to people. So it's become bigger than just cards. Yeah. Um, but also when he was getting close on his set, I kept his list in my phone too. Correct. So, so when I would see something come up, I would say, text him and say, Hey buddy, look, I see this card's coming up. Have you seen it? And he goes, no, I didn't see that yet. I said, okay, it's got six days left. We I both need it. You take this one. I'll exactly. wait and get the next one. That's, that's a, a, goes a long you. way. I won't bid against you. He's like, no problem. Well, now this the same guy, you know, I just gave him the last card that he needed in a set. And he's like, look, he's already messaged me three or four times. Hey, I think I might've located one of these for you. You know, yeah. And so the, the the anxiety is pretty high just because of the nature of who I am. Yeah. But also um, it really helps when you're able to control that and focus it on doing the right thing. Right. Being honest with people, um, yeah. you know, taking advantage of situations when they arise, whether it's a card that's, hey, look, I want to pay. I want a premium. OK, you got to have the, the you got to have the the gall to jump in there and pay thirty thousand for a twenty thousand dollar card. Because you might not see it again anytime soon. You just might not. It's easy. It's, Steve, isn't it easy to rationalize? Not, I'm not saying it's it's the right thing to do, but I know you did it, and you know I did it. But to rationalize, buying a twenty, paying twenty four grand for a card that just sold for twenty grand a month ago, because you're telling yourself, well, I'm, I'm going to hold this set for ten years. Why do I care 
about yeah. you know twenty percent premium now. When I'm, I need all of 123, I might not see it again. I'm going to hold it for 10 years. It's going to be worth more in 10 years. I'm not going to care about the four grand then, but I would really care if I didn't have the damn part of the set, you know? So you kind of talk yourself into it. You rationalize overpaying for cards. I went through that. That caused me anxiety knowing that I was at the mercy and I did not have any bargaining power and I couldn't, I had nothing to leverage. I was at the mercy of the seller. Right. Uh, and what else, Steve, and you tell me if I'm wrong, and it helped having a PWCC vault, don't get me wrong, but tracking shipments of these cards, it's it's one thing like, you know, a lot of collectors out there, you may buy a $5,000 card, that's not going to leave your radar. <laughs> but it, there are times, and you know this, you might have 19 $5,000 cards yeah. Yeah. flying across seas to PWCC, to PSA, you're waiting to hear back from this. My spreadsheets, this is just one spreadsheet that I shared with you guys on the screen. This is one spreadsheet. I had seven spreadsheets just for this one set, Chase. It was that bananas. That caused me anxiety. They did yeah. not quite there yet. I can't highlight it. I can't put it to bed yet. I've got to, A, get it in my PWCC vault raw. B, group it together. Uh, send it off to PSA. C, I got to wait for the grades. D, I got to get it back. I got to make sure it grades. It doesn't come back at a card saver. And at the same time, if another card pops up, you don't have, you got to go buy it while all this other stuff's going on. So right. multitasking to the extreme is a prerequisite to do something like this in the time period that you did it. Now, here's my question to you. Surely you feel like, I know you're not across the finish line, but with just three cards, we throw it out there. You've got your spreadsheet. You can remember those off the top of your head. You're going to know what those are worth off the top of your head. It's time for you to come join me on the dark side and start collecting some three-figure Jordans, some little Jordans. I'm having so much fun. I'm going to get you into it. I know you're going to need a little bit of a breather. I'm going to need a little bit. lot of a breather. From this no, giving, no way. No way. I'm giving you 30 days. Come on. You're going, you're going to the national with me, right? We've got to go up there and see Midwest Whale. We got to yeah. at least spend yeah. one evening with him. We'll go to the club. He'll have guns right. like John Morant. We'll, we'll hang out with him in the club and flash his weapon. Uh, you know, <laughs> we'll spend time with him. Um, so I'm going to give you 30 days, and then we're going to start buying Jordans. You and I are going to start buying Jordans. You're going to dive into this world, and it's going to feel so much more fun, and you're not going to have any anxiety because the cards are so much cheaper. And, yes, Jordan cards are cheaper than PMG Reds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, look, I, I look forward to the day when I can actually think about something like that, because like you said, man, right now, I'm not yeah, man, just nothing else in the, in the collecting world right now. Okay, it matters. You know, there's that's the dark side of it. There, there is. I, I've got safe searches on a few things. And when yeah. they come up, I'm like, nah, I just I, I have to push them to the side because I've got to get to the finish line. And like you said, the dark side of it, too, is knowing that, you know, when you're done, what's next? I can't even think about that with this set because I mean, this has been you're, crazy. You're, you're, you're 75. I mean, Outlaw and Starks is going to cost you what six to eight thousand bucks. The Kobe, you're going to, you're, you're getting it at a better price than you would have when I bought mine. That's for damn sure, but that ain't cheap. Uh, and then we know what the pennies, you know, going to be about probably 20 to 30 somewhere in there, just depending on the about quality right. and the condition, about you know, because right. there are huge penny collectors out there. That's a big card for a penny. It's hard, penny, man. Like, the best penny in the world, right? There's the green, there's the red. And I guess right. you could argue about some others, but those are high on the list for any Anthony Hardaway collector. And there's a ton of Anthony Hardaway collectors. So I, hope I did not know that. You know, that's one of the things I learned doing this set. When you start getting down to finding certain cards, there are some players that, man, they are just, I mean, people are just collecting them, right? They're John just, Kemp they're, and Gary Payton. Yeah, they're people, people collect those guys. Um, and the Chicago people are crazy about those old Chicago. Ones. Those, there, there's, let me make sure I don't miss anybody. There's Jordan, there's Longley, there's Kerr, there's Pippen. Pippen. Who am I forgetting? Ku coach Rodman. 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 That's six Bulls, all color match. All there's Bulls collectors coming out the you know what, five, all over the place. Minimum, minimum five digits basically for those cards. Longley, sometimes you can get under, yeah. but the rest of them. You see, I was getting them all way under uh, when I was doing it, and, and yeah. it, it flipped. The switch flipped so quick. I, I started mine, Steve. Um, I'm going to say, not you know, I had the Jordan and I had the Shaq because I PC those guys. So I had yeah. those two, but I actually decided to chase these sets. Um, I would say 11 months before you did. So you were August of 2022. 
I had started it in maybe September of 2021. Mm -hmm. So uh, before the first quarter bubble, right? The first quarter bubble of 2021 was the craziness and the hobby and everything went bananas. These were no exception. So I was just collecting it at a different price point than you. And, uh, you know, so it's, I don't know, it worked out for me. I got some cash to go buy Jordans. It worked out for you. I got to give you 29 at once. And that was the springboard that you needed to get off to the races. Now you've got it down to where you need three or four. You got to chill, man. You, you should be able to take a deep breath and decompress and uh, I'm not saying go buy other cards, but you can sit back because you know what you need now off the top of your head. You don't need to keep lists anymore. You don't need to keep spreadsheets. Um, of course, you need to get them all graded and all that. That's a pain in the ass. Well, Brian, I got to tell you that I do, but that's but, but I'm embarrassed to even say this. So recently I bought the Longley and the Pippin at the same time from the same guy on Instagram. Um, the guy I told you about who was like, oh, man, I'm, you know, I did a deal with you, you know, eight, nine months ago. Brian introduced us. I remember the deal was yeah. said. Thank you, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I do that and I buy them from him. Well, that was on the 15th of February. Well, on the 16th of February, I was leaving for Mardi Gras because my son was a page in Bacchus and I ride in Bacchus and all that stuff. So we left on that Thursday. Well, I was gone. And then we left directly from Mardi Gras and went out of town on a family vacation because you know, down here in Louisiana, for those who don't know, Mardi Gras week is everybody's off school. And so yeah. where the rest of the nations, it's just another day to them. Just another day. Right. And so we used that time to take a vacation. So we went on vacation with the family. Well, I got back on Saturday. So I'd been gone from Thursday, you know, through the following Saturday. And, uh, and I was talking to, to uh, Midwest Whale, and I'm like, man, here's my list. And he's like, bro, he's like, you you already got Longley. I saw Longley and Pippin on my list. He's like, you already got Longley and Pippin. I'm like, did I? And of course, you know, Mardi Gras. I mean, I did drinking. the same thing numerous times. <laughs> a lot of drinking, a lot of partying. And then, of course, went on my family vacation with some other friends of ours, a lot of drinking, a lot of partying. So I'm like, did I? And he goes, bro, you got it from this guy. Like, And, and he's like, he messaged the guy while we were talking. He's like, look. He said, yeah, I sold him the Monk's card to so Steve. And I'm like, I had a, a full on panic attack. Cause I'm like, I don't know where these cards are. Like I have no idea where they were. Where are they being shipped and what and did I pay and everything else? I had those types of moments. Steve. It was crazy. So I look at my, in my uh, messages on Instagram and I see where I said, Hey, my office got the cards great. And I had sent him one of those vanishing pictures that you can't look at again. So I, yeah. so I couldn't look at the picture of the cards, but I knew I had gotten them. I mean, I came home, turns out they were in like, there's a little drawer in my safe, a little jewelry drawer thing that I don't yeah. really use. And so yeah. I was like digging through my safe. I'm like, oh god! And I opened the drawer drawer. And I guess right before I left for Mardi Gras, I was so busy, I stuck them in the Put them somewhere. Oh my gosh, that would that would have caused a humongous panic. I was having, them. and you know, those two cars are monsters. And those so, are monsters. Yes, those I, was, are monsters. I literally took them to my office. I FedEx overnight in the PWCC. I'm like, this is why I have to keep them out of my possession. You know, I keep stuff sitting next to me like this, like like you know, Jeter, you know, PSA sixes, like you know, yeah. Jeter rookies. That, that, this, uh, I got all that kind of stuff sitting next to me. And I don't, you know, the reds, the reds have to go because somebody's like, Hey man, do you have a duplicate of this? I can open up my app and just, you know, yeah. the name and see, you know? So look, here's the deal. And another reason PWCC for me was huge because anytime I did buy one of these, you know, uh, another thing that caused anxiety is comping these cards is just not easy. You not easy. very rarely can you comp one of these, PMG Reds, a non super mega star, uh, because you just don't see them that much. So, like, let's say Eric Dampier or Marcus Camby, for that matter. You sometimes you have to find a similarly situated player from that era in the '90s to comp it, like Camby and Starks. You could kind of try to use those guys to comp each other. Um, you know, Kendall Gill, you might not see. Where's Kendall Gill? Kendall Gill is kind of like a semi star. Kendall Gill is kind of like a. Uh, an Antoine Walker, uh, maybe not an Antoine Walker, maybe a little bit a notch below. So you just right. you create your comps. You've got to use you know your ingenuity. You also need to know something about '90s basketball because somebody could really screw you if they're like, oh yeah, um, you know, Bo Outlaw should be worth the same as Antoine Walker or Ron Mercer. You may not right. know that. You may think, oh yeah, you're right. Okay, tell me what I owe you. No, you need to know basketball. You need to know that, and then you also need to know the pop reports and the rarity as well. Um, and then you have to master the grade differential between PSA and BGS and how that affects the price. There's a lot to it, man. I'm not I'm not saying it's rocket science, but it takes experience. And I'm glad uh, you learned everything I learned. You just learned it a year later. You know, it, it's the exact same story. Oh, you're, you're and, right. it. and something else, Brian, I think that that's worth talking about that people people don't think about, which I really did because, you know, I, 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 I love watching basketball in the 90s. I mean, I'm, I'm a big basketball guy. I'm, you know, probably one of the best horse players in the city of Baton Rouge. Exactly. Um, 
Yeah, Brian beat me. You last can't week. see. I've got a big golden horse winning belt I'm wearing right now. Yeah. I, I you can't see it because it's below the camera. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Um, so, uh, so, but, but one of the things I look at with these cards when I started collecting said, you know, everybody knew the, the the big stars, right? The Barclays and the Jordans. You know, you had the you know the Kerrs and the, just all the, all these guys that were great players. The, the, um, the Kerrs. Yeah. Put right. Kerr the in there with Jordan. Well, 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 yeah. Three minutes. I just started thinking maybe you don't know basketball. The Bulls. He was a good player, man. Look, I think he I, he could probably beat you in horse. Yeah. Oh, he would beat me in horse. He beat my ass. Yeah. I'd be broke if I paid, played him for money. That's a fact. And so, That's a fact. but one of the but my point is is that. I look at something like Gil. You bring up that Gil guy, right? Like, if you, it's 1997, 1998. You're ripping packs, okay? And you pull a Kendall Gill, PMG Red number. You're like, oh, that's going in the box, man. I missed. I missed. You're like, it's a miss. It's yeah. a miss. And so now, all of a sudden, these cards are huge, right? Well, then, so so you got you got a few headwinds. You got the 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 miss that went into the box that went into the trash, okay? Yep. You got you got the the PC collectors like you talk about. You yep. know what I mean? Never giving it up. Guys that are never giving it up. There is no price. Right. And outside of the trash, you got the, the cards that are just sitting somewhere that if somebody opened up that box, went, oh, this is a bunch of 90s garbage. It's just a bunch of, you know, a bazillion print cards. Little, There's a Bo Outlaw. Yeah. Yeah. Little bit of Bo Outlaw sneak hiding in there that somebody like me paid eight grand for <laughs> right now. <laughs> you know, I should have said that. Somebody's watching and be like, I got Bo Outlaw. Man, I'm this Dude, the only way this episode has been hilarious and easy and a blast, and I think everybody's gonna love it. The only way it could get funnier is if I had Bo Outlaw and Starks, like, and I pulled them on the screen and, I, and we Dude. negotiated right now. That would be the only way this could get problem, any funnier. The problem for you is that I'm only about 30 minutes from your office, and I would be there and we'd be having an <laughs> off, offline talk. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. That's right. I, I thought we were going to end this episode with you trying to negotiate a price for my Jordan and test the theory that there's a price for everything. But mm-hmm. it sounds like you got it locked down, man. That's exciting. Yeah. I know there's some, yeah, there's some I, I contingencies, excited. but you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I it's I, I have I have an opportunity to, to snag one. It's just a look at that 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 for me the the Jordan and the Kobe were going to be the last two cards I was going to do because they're checks. You can find them. You can write a check. Yes, yeah, um, the opportunity has risen for me to get one that that kind of like what you did with me. You know, opportunity to, to take a little bit of time, um, you know, to, to pay for the card, which in my life is is uh, a lot easier because I can go sell some things. I can go move some things around to to do that. But it's a it's a big investment. You know, it's hard for me being somebody who has a a uh, PSA 10 86 Fleer that's not only a PWCCA but also a M- NBA silver yeah. and that's in my personal collection it's hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that this really beautiful one of the probably nicer Jordans in the world and a Jim Mint 10 um is worth you know half or 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 less than or roughly half of this PMG Red 97 card you know it's, it's not funny. Like- it's crazy. As kids, as kids, we grew up collecting, and we're always taught rookie cards are valuable. Right. Other it's cards are card, not. Man. Not for '90s basketball. I could, my wallet it can it, it for better or worse. You know, both directions. I can vouch that that is not the case. Rookie cards do not rule the day. They don't. Uh, there's a lot more to it in the '90s, and it would blow a lot of people's minds. Ultra modern collectors think rookies are are everything. Guys who collected, you know. Junk wax and baseball in the '80s think rookies are everything. People who collected in the '90s know better. It, there is a lot to it and a lot to digest and a lot to educate yourself on. Yeah, um, but it's awesome. So um, that you know, the one thing I will say is you you got the Kobe that's that's still yet to be checked off. Um, it's it's good and it's bad. Here's how it's good. It's good because it's worth about half now of what I had to pay for that card. Right. Uh, it's bad because you're going to have a lot of people situated like me, Steve that paid 2x that are not going to sell it for x i'm not right. going to take that loss because i know 10 years from now i'm gonna be able to at least get my money back or at least i, I hope you know god willing uh and so unless you find somebody who's just really illiquid and really needs to cash out and is ready to take an absolute bloodbath on it it's going to be hard to find the code harder to find the kobe than it would have been had yeah. it just you know plateaued that would have been really bad i'd agree with that brian because i think i think that that you know i don't think the economy's gotten squeezed hard enough yet to pop out those people who may have stretched themselves thin to buy a Kobe uh, PMG mm-hmm. red. Um, but, but by the same token, you're right. If you decided to pay six figures for a, for a basketball card, I mean, hopefully 
you could pay six hopefully, figures for a basketball card. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hopefully you could wait it out for a year. Like that wasn't like, hey, I need this hundred grand back in six weeks. You know, that's the way it was for some like, people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, look, let's wrap it, man. That's it. That's our, uh, that's our episode. You know, I do a lot of videos, Steve, where, you know, Recently, I've got a lot of great feedback on, on Jordan stuff. And it's Jordan, yeah, sure. Jordan, PSA 8 stuff. I told you I'm messing with yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah. So little cards, a lot of people can pick them up. But it's always fun to talk about big, giant, badass monster cards like this and um, and let the guys that watch and the gals that watch my channel come along with you on your set collecting journey. I don't know if they can properly like feel the anxiety and the, the angst that comes with this. But I think we tried our best to try to let them know, uh, just give them a little hint, a little pinch of what it was like to do it. Uh, you, you did it and you're going to win. You're going to win it. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to lose it. Sort of like the reverse of when we played horse that one time uh, at the gym where I won and you lost very badly. So I'm the loser in the set chase and you're the winner. So uh, well, listen, I'll, I'll, make this, I'll make this deal with you after I get my spreadsheet done with every car that I bought. I'll sell it to you at the same price uh, up, up, upgrade that you did me. What is it, 10%? <laughs> well, okay, but how long do I have to pay you? <laughs> I, I mean, paid you off in three months. I know you did. We're in a little <laughs> different situation. Yes, yes. There's always a bigger fish. That's another thing that the hobby has taught me. There's always a bigger fish. That's a fact. Uh, that's it, man. Thanks for joining. Uh, get down to the game. Who they play tonight? Who are you going to watch? Uh, watch go watch Luca, bro, your boy. Oh my god! I got to see him earlier this year. Yeah, I went down there and watched him earlier this year. So cool. Yeah, and you get to see Kyrie. I hate to do this to you live and like right now, but like I do have an extra sweet ticket or two if you're interested in making the trip. They play at six thirty. See Luca. I can't do it. I am otherwise detained this evening. But uh, but we we need to go down to a game together. We I've you loaned me a couple sweet tickets before, and I've been down. You've been down, but we haven't gone down together. So we need to go down together. Yeah, get Zion Uh, back in. We'll go. I've got an extra ticket for this Sunday's Blazers game, but I mean, you got your own tickets. But if you want to come down there, you can be a my yeah. sweet with me. If I go, I'll come. I'll come holler at you. Definitely come holler at me because remember, I got my guys, my Lillard collectors that are coming right. down. My Blazers fans are coming to watch too. So uh-huh. hopefully, they don't get too unruly. Those Portland people are crazy, right? Uh, so anyway, um, cool, man. Uh, Steve, thanks for joining us. This is a really fun episode. I'm gonna let this thing go probably sometime next week, the week of uh, like March 14th or 12th or whatever that is. So uh, 13th, I guess it will be 13th that week. Um, but uh, anyway, that's Thanks it. Now, Everybody, dude. go follow Steve. He's gonna start posting, and or he's gonna hire a minion to go start posting. This was your uh, you know, epic signatures set. You've got football, you've got baseball, you got basketball. So this PMG red set is not your first foray into set collecting. Uh, you got to get better. There's the Jordan card that we were talking about. One of the best of the best. Uh, I'll be the first to admit it. It's a big time uh, PSA ten, not your average PSA ten. But um, Steve, thanks for joining, man. Appreciate it, man. Talk to you soon. Cool. Uh, You guys, thanks for watching. Keep collecting. Stay positive in the hobby. And peace.